know, we sit here early in the year. We talk about, okay, what would be like the minimum thing that would we could probably accept or, or that could probably be something you feel okay about coming out of the season. We talked eight and four, you know, you talk maybe seven and five worst set of circumstances. Um, this thing's kind of barreling towards six and six right now. And I said it Saturday night. I know I know Northwestern's not very good, but when you play this, you know the type of football that Michigan has played at times. I don't. I don't think you can just sit here and say, "Oh well, it looks like it's going to be six and six. I, I still think the the range of outcomes is on the table to you know to not make a bowl game. I think that's very much still in play. So I, I guess from here, I mean, you, you go to Indiana this weekend. You're going to get a second bye week I, at this point in the year. I don't know if that's beneficial or not. Um, and then you, you know, you play Northwestern, you end the year at Ohio state. So like, what do you look for the rest of the year? Cause to me, it, it's almost like you're kind of just waiting for the season to end to know how a lot of these deficiencies, a lot of these things that need to change, how is that going to get addressed? Cause that's sort of where I find myself today. Yeah, me too. And, uh, you know, you wait, and this is another thing I wrote is that you wait all year, right? They're only, if you're lucky, right, you get 75 Michigan football seasons in your lifetime and, uh, you know, six, it's 55 or, or 60 that you really get and, and appreciate and are able to understand. And it sucks when you have this and you're watching it and you're like, this isn't working and this team isn't going anywhere and I'm improving and what's next and is it going to be better? Uh, and again, the saving grace is that you've got NAL and you've got the portal now where you can fix it. Uh, am I confident that they're going to be able to do this in a year? Not really just because they've shown they're kind of slow to the draw when it comes to the portal and when it comes to NIL. So they're kind of playing from behind, which is what you've been saying for three years. So, and, and that's really largely due to the administration. So hopefully he gets everything he needs. You know, I, I hear all the talk about Bryce Underwood. This isn't about one player in one recruiting class. Yeah, that stuff helps, but they still need to be really well coached too. And that's my concern is that I see some of these, these, Issues up front on offense, on the offensive line, and talking to Doug Skeen, Michigan's former All Big Ten offensive lineman, where guys are making the same mistakes over and over again. And and these are basics. He said, these are things that you learn in camp. And you look at the missed tackles and you look at the third down percentage against guys. What are they, 109th in the country in third down defense? That's insane. Uh, this should be better than it is. And, uh, you know, I understand that they're missing Will Johnson, but uh, you can be better than that. And they should be better than that. Like, Anthony said, as the sum of its parts, uh, it, it's just not living up to it. There's enough talent there to be better than they are. And that's what bothers me the most. So uh, if I, I would feel really good if this were a really good, sound, fundamental football team that just didn't have the talent and they were getting beat because of that. But I think it's other things. And that's what really kind of makes me nervous. Yeah, it's it's the, you know, just the feeling that you have a lot of talent out there and you're not getting uh, what you should be getting out of it. And it's not to those guys. Uh, it's not their fault, right? I mean, you're seeing Mason Graham and Kenneth Graham play 55 snaps in games. They're third and fourth in the big 10 in defensive snaps among defensive tackles. And they're giving it their all every single time. And I think you know Mason Graham kind of plays at the same level uh, pretty much all the time. Obviously he'd, he'd benefit from being a little bit fresher. I think Kenneth Grant, really benefited last year from being able to be in that 20 to 25 window and and just kind of wreak havoc when he came in. But you have guys giving it they're all for the most part. They they still need to be better. I agree with you. The offensive line up front, I mean maybe it's it's max effort, right? But you got to play smarter. You got to play with better fundamentals. You got to have better mental focus, physical focus, whatever you want to call it because Giovanni El Hadi, I thought had a, a bad game against uh, Oregon. It started on the the first play from scrimmage. He gets, you know, he doesn't even, I don't even want to say he got beat because he didn't even get a, a shoulder pad on his guy and it gets blown up for a loss of yards. Michigan went backwards on their first three first down plays. Michigan averaged less than three yards per play on first down. They averaged 1.8 yards per rush on first down, I believe it was. So, and, and a lot of that was, I thought some weird plays called on first down. The first three first downs were a pitch out to Donovan Edwards, uh, a, an end around or kind of a, a reverse to Colston Loveland and then a Samaj Morgan end around instead of just trying to, you know, of course, if it doesn't work, you can question it, but they, they didn't get North and South. They didn't get positive yardage on first down and they averaged over eight yards to go on third down. And that's partly why you go four of 12 on third down. It's not just those plays. It's what led to that. What, what situations were you in 
specifically. And I do give Davis Warren credit. Two of his touchdowns were on third down. He had a couple other really nice conversions, uh, one to Colston Loveland, one to Tyler Morris on third down. But, you know, you got to maximize all the opportunities you have when you're at a, a deficiency in talent, especially offensively and at the quarterback position. You're seeing some progress. Davis Warren's gotten better. Some other guys have gotten better. Wide receivers finally stepped up. Loveland is incredible. Uh, Donovan Edwards is playing a little bit better than he has at times. But you're just not seeing the coordination there be uh, in the organization be as good as it could, which is is disappointing. So you, you go into these games and you realize that, that Indiana can put 40, 50 on anybody. Uh, uh, you know, Ohio State can do the same thing. Oregon could certainly do the same thing. You're going to have to score some points to beat these teams and and stay in the game with these teams instead of just, hey, we had a chance to make it a one score game or we had a chance to do this. You got to actually put up some points here uh, and the defense has to has to start faster and not allow so much early on in the games. Otherwise, you're not going to have much of a shot, and especially in these road environments, they have two out of three coming up. Well, the other thing, too, is, uh, you know, to piggyback off the road environments, I mean, you we just saw them play a very good, fo- you know, an elite football team at home and and not be able to take advantage of, you know, there was some some field position. You know, I, I keep going back to, you know, again, down, what was it, down one score, you get a stop on defense, you get the ball at midfield, you go three and out. Like those type of moments, um, they haven't been able to meet those moments uh, this year. And you're going to go on the road next week to a team where I'm Kurt Signetti, uh, you know, will not hesitate to hang 50 on them if he can. Um, in a lot of ways, you know, kind of fulfilling maybe the prophecy that Ryan Day said uh, when he was going to run up the score on Michigan a few years ago. I mean, Kurt Signetti is a killer and they will not let the foot off the gas. And and some people said that Dan Landing ran up the score on Saturday. I don't feel that way at all. Uh, still a two score game. You're trying to run out the clock. You're trying to make sure that you uh, secure a victory. I never felt like, you know, Oregon rubbed salt in the wound or anything like that. But I think he um, ran it up, but I don't have an issue with that. Stop it if you have a problem with it. So, no, I mean, it's that. no, that's the flip side of some of the way that, you know, the way that Michigan's played the last few years against some of these teams. Um, when you have a chance to just kind of twist the knife, you do it. And I think that's the worry for me is that. You know, when you have an opportunity to play in some of these games where you are the underdog and you, you know, you are trying to spring an upset, I don't know that they're disciplined enough on the field, and I don't know that the guys on the sideline put them in good enough positions to to ensure they get the job done. So that's you know, yeah. And people say, oh, well, you know, if you just find a way to beat Ohio State, you can salvage the season. I just, I don't think they have the rest of, like. If you're baking it, you're trying to bake this cake. You know, the recipe is to beat Ohio State. They haven't displayed any of the things this year to me um, that show that they're capable of doing that. And that's, to me, that's just what kind of lends itself to sort of coasting the rest of the season out and seeing how Throne more fixes this. Because I do think that he should be allowed the opportunity to fix this, you know, barring something crazy happening. Um, that's the only thing that's, that makes this season even somewhat anything but a shit sandwich is if you beat Ohio state. Right. And I mean, it could have been worse, right. You could have lost to Michigan state. That is the only thing, but that's, this is not Michigan state. This is Michigan. And it's not about beating Michigan state. You're supposed to beat Michigan state. Right. Uh, It's a sense of relief and that you aren't walking around the state and saying, God, you guys really suck. And we beat you and we weren't supposed to beat you. We beat you and so on and so forth. If you're a Michigan fan having to deal with Michigan state fans, but this is Michigan, and that's not really the the expectation here. So now, if you beat Ohio State, if they say you finish seven and five, you get something, you show some improvement. But we we guys, we we know that's probably not going to happen. I think it's a long shot. This is not the mid nineties when there was still a ton of talent on those teams, and and they could pull one out. This this Ohio State team is probably going to step on the throat the way Indiana is probably going to step on us. So this team is not built to go on the road and win they don't have the psyche they don't have the confidence and they don't have the leadership i hate to say it but i've seen that as well so it's going to be tough we're just going to play it out and then you know whether it's the you know light my fart bowl or whatever wherever they're going to go what is it i mean probably music city bowl or the uh the Quick Duke's lane. Mayo Bowl is in play. A Sharon Moore Mayo Bath is in play. This where's week. Where's the Mayo Bowl held? Charlotte, North Carolina. All right. Well, let's see. That wouldn't be terrible. So, but 
uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's a far cry from where we were the last three years, and it needs to be changed. It needs to be changed quick. As much as this is Michigan and, and beating Michigan State doesn't really do much to what the season is, this is Michigan and beating Ohio State would, um, and, and they do have some opportunities here. I mean, the Indiana game, uh, they're, they're you know, double-digit or two-score underdogs. I think it opened at 14. It's the biggest spread Michigan's had against Indiana, I think, ever. Uh, they've won 42 out of 44 against this team in their two score underdogs. You don't see that happen. It's a credit to what Indiana's done this year and obviously some of the issues we've talked about with Michigan. But, um, you know, I, I think Derek Moore talked about it after the game. Uh, I believe it was him that said, you know, we're still going to keep fighting. And, you know, how we're going to be remembered is how we finish out this season. And in a way, He's right and wrong, right? They're going to be remembered as the team that followed up the national championship. It wasn't very good. It, it it just, you know, they lost some games they shouldn't have. But if they do finish strong somehow, right, I'm not predicting it or saying it's likely. And, of course, it, it has, wasn't likely in some of these other upsets throughout the years of Ohio State or keeping it close in 2013. You know, he could have won on a two-point conversion, things like that. Uh, but but he's right in, in that sense that you will always be remembered, though, as a team that, you know, either knocked Ohio State out of the playoff. We'll see what the Buckeyes do against Indiana. They could still get in with two losses, but or, you know, just kind of, you know, maybe got Ryan Day out of there. Let's say Ohio State loses that game, makes the playoff, loses in the first round. He may be gone. So there's still a lot on the line in that game, especially including on the Ohio State side, a lot of pressure for Ryan Day in those guys. And you have the chance to go on the road, get your first road win of the season, even though it is late in the year against Indiana this weekend that would certainly be something that they'd come home and, and be very excited about so there's still more to play with I do disagree Anthony on the the bye week not mean, meaning anything this is a banged up team as well especially in the secondary I think getting those guys back for Northwestern Ohio State in my opinion would be would be big because uh you know Northwestern you can kind of figure some things out you got to win it's no guarantee but then then you got Ohio State the next week and you take your best and healthiest team to Columbus and see if you can sing the victors again by the end of the afternoon yeah, uh, the bye week kind of becomes okay. Reset now. All of your resources are, are obviously on. You know, you got to prepare for Northwestern, but it, it's fully becomes. You better you know, beat them. <laughs> well, yeah, you better. I'm just saying, it, it fully becomes like okay. How do you position yourself to beat Ohio State? 